Hey everybody, how you doing? My name's Mark and welcome to the SimHanger channel. This is a follow-up video to my earlier video PC upgrade in which we tested Microsoft Flight Simulator with the 10900K versus my previous system, the 8700K. And today, using the 10900K, we're going to pitch the 2080 Ti against the 3090. But first, a point of correction from my earlier video. I inadvertently mixed up some numbers when putting the summary sheet together. My apologies for this. The correction has to do with HAGS, Hardware Accelerated Graphic Scheduling. And this relates only to monitor or 2D mode. So to clarify, with the 3090, whether you have HAGS on or off, and whether or not you're in full screen or window mode, appears to have no impact on the frame rate. However, with the 2080 Ti, it's a different story. The frames drop significantly, 23%, when you're in window mode, regardless of your HAG setting. So the new system at 1440p provides an 8% improvement in performance, or FPS, in full screen mode, whereas in window mode, it's 39%. If you're not familiar with hardware accelerated graphic scheduling and how to switch it on or off within Windows, check out this video, link in the notes below. With that done, let's move on to the test conditions and parameters applied to ensure a like-for-like -like comparison or conditions were the same for the 3090 and the 2080 Ti. Both the CPU and the graphic cards are running at stock for both the 2D and VR tests as I felt this will give more realistic results as not everybody overclocks their CPU or graphics card. All tests are done with the NVIDIA driver 466.77. In sim, all tests start at Merrill C. Meeks Field in Chicago, Kilo Charlie Golf X-Ray, weather is preset few clouds and it's 10 o'clock in the morning. We're using the Beechcraft Bonanza G36. This aircraft features highly detailed PBR and texturing, plus an added load of two G1000 panels in cockpit. This aircraft provides a medium load on the sim. We're in Chicago with photogrammetry enabled. There's plenty of water to add a water texturing and reflection load on the system. And the airport is add-on scenery from Z Design Studios. The scenery places a medium load on the system and has been brilliantly done, one of my favourite. I'll leave links to the video in the notes below. Be sure to check it out. Our comparisons today will be done in frames per second, with two different settings applied. Firstly, the settings I used for my 2080 Ti to give me a great performance, and we'll also be testing out the default ultra setting. In addition, each of these settings will be tested at three different resolutions, HD, 2K and 4K. A few points to note, we will not be testing at low or medium default Microsoft settings. And the reason is these NVIDIA cards are the current and past generation kings. These cards were designed with the enthusiast in mind and designed to give you ultimate performance, but of course at a premium price. I think it's also worth mentioning that the new 3070 carries a performance that is only 1 or 2% below that of the previous generation 2080 Ti tested here, and at half the list price. To arrive at the results we used a number of different ways. Firstly we used the game mode frame counter. Press the Windows key and G brings up the bar, click on performance and pin that. Highlight the frames per second and it gives us both the current frames per second as well as an average frames per second for the whole duration that it runs. I checked this frame rate against the developer mode in sim frame counter and it seems largely the same. Every flight was done twice. In monitor mode only, the second flight was done using MSI's afterburner to validate the game mode results, and then an average of both were taken to arrive at a final score. In VR, the game bar frame counter was used, as well as the in-sim frame counter to verify and check results. Doing the same flight multiple times, well, I nearly lost the will, but we'll shortly skip to the results. Obviously, I didn't record the flights because it would change the frames per second count and provide incorrect results. But the same flight exactly was done for each test, subject to small variances in my piloting skills. After sitting on the runway, there's a look to the right and then to the left, 
and then we take off on the runway. Allow the speed to build to about 70 knots and then we rotate. As we get level with the main terminal, well, it's gear up. I then use the default look to the left to raise the flaps and hold that view until such time as the flaps are up. Now safely airborne, I pull back on both the throttle and the prop lever. I'm looking for an altitude between 900 and 1000 feet. Approximately halfway along I look to the right to the ship that's in the water. Once I've checked my altitude I start a gradual bank to the left. I'm going to be following the waterway through downtown Chicago. As I bank I'll peer again to the left to see the ships and boats. Once over the waterway I'll start to level out and pull back on the throttle so I don't climb too high, planning to fly directly over that spire. As soon as I'm overhead I'll look to the left for a short period of time and once I'm over the spire I will start to cut my power, prepping for my descent. The differing scenery and different views allow me to get a real world result. The time of day allowing for a good cast of shadows. A right bank going directly over this building and then it's down between the two towers here. And I'll continue my descent towards the Chicago Tribune. And as I approach it, accelerate out and that's the end of the test. My theory being if I can fly comfortably here, well I can fly just about anywhere. These are the in-sim settings that I've applied for my medium to high test. And as mentioned earlier, these are the settings I used for my 2080 Ti. The settings are mainly high, but some medium chucked in as well to give me the performance level that I required. Some of the heavy hitters like volumetric cloud and ambient occlusion are on medium. Lens correction and bloom are off, but they're not heavy hitters, it's just a personal preference. Render and detail level slider bars are all set at 100. Okay, so here are the results in 2D mode for the medium to high settings. And results are shown for each of the respective resolutions. Orange is the 2080 Ti and green is the RTX 3090. At 1080p, both the 2080 Ti and 3090 scored exactly the same at 48 frames per second. The 3090 not providing any advantage at the HD resolution. At 1440p, well the 2080 Ti showed it's still a card to reckon with. And once again recorded 48 frames per second despite the step up in resolution. The EVGA XC3 this time showed a slight advantage at 53 frames per second. That's about a 10% improvement. And now for the real test at 4K. And the 2080 Ti recorded 41 frames per second. Not bad. This is where we expect the 3090 to perform. And it didn't disappoint. Once again recording 53 frames per second. Pretty respectable achievement considering most of the settings are on high. Just a note that in all cases where necessary I've rounded the FPS down, not up. I think it's also worthwhile mentioning at this point that these are the results for my system with my system specs. Different systems will yield different results. Any conclusion I can draw from this if you're happy to run at the settings as indicated, and I think most people would be, well the 3090 is just not worth the investment. Given the current lineup of graphic cards, well, I would probably plumb for a 3070 or 3070 Ti, topping out at a 3080, availability of course permitting. At 4K resolution, the 3090 outperformed the 2080 Ti by just over 29%. The ultra settings chosen are the default Microsoft Flight Simulator ultra settings within the sim. And once again this was tested at all three of the chosen resolutions. 
I note the lens correction is set to off, but this is a default setting and not something that I've changed. Render scale is at 100, terrain level of detail at 200, and object's level of detail is also at 200. Let's now have a look at the results for Ultra in monitor or 2D mode. First of all, the 2080 Ti, it scored 38 frames per second, compared to the 48 frames per second at the previous setting. The 3090 was also slower at 40 frames per second. Stepping up to 1440p, which by the way is the most common resolution for flight simming, the 2080 Ti just dropped one frame to 37, whilst the 3090 held its pace at 40 frames. Whilst both the tested settings are fairly high, I did expect a little bit more from the 3090. But now to the real crunch, at 4K. With Ultra settings and the 2080 started to struggle a little bit for the first time. But the 3090 had a surprise in store. And I think for the first time we're able to see it stretch its legs. And it recorded the best frame rate even though it is at its highest resolution. Completely unexpected to be honest. And it was the first test in which I've seen the card use more than 11 gigs of RAM. With settings set at Ultra and in 4K, the 3090 outperformed the 2080 Ti by about 57% in terms of pure frame rate. To be fair, however, I must say that even at 44 frames per second, there was the odd micro stutter here and there, but it was perfectly flyable. We can see now why the 3090 is an enthusiast card, giving the boost just when you need it most. For the medium to high VR test, these are the exact settings that I would fly in VR with the 2080 Ti using my Reverb G1. For all these tests, my render scale is set to 100%, and in the OpenXR development tool, it's set at 70. These settings would give me a smooth performance, with the occasional micro stutter here and there when I'm in heavily built up areas and so on. But for day-to-day -day VR flying, I was more than happy with it. And these are the settings for Ultra for VR. There's no Ultra default setting, so I changed everything to Ultra that I could, and where there wasn't an Ultra, I put it on high. I maxed out everything that I could, with the exception of the detail slider bars, which I left all of them at 100. OpenXR, once again, is set at 70%. Just a quick note here that flying at Ultra in VR is a bit pointless at this time as the resolution of even the best headsets not up to the task. And the difference between High and Ultra, well it's nominal at best. Here are the VR results and I've combined both tests into one graph for the sake of expediency and simplicity. The 2080 Ti came in at 32 frames per second. Remember it's a high density area so normal flying would give me about 38 which was very comfortable. The 3090 on the other hand reported a comfortable 38 frames per second. And now for the ultimate crunch test. For the first time the 2080 Ti failed to deliver, recording only 18 frames per second. The 3090 recorded 33 frames per second which was great. That's more than a 80% increase in frames per second. And perhaps highlights that the Enthusiast card for VR give you the best performance as you would expect it to. But of course there's always a penalty, and that penalty currently is price. The last topic I want to cover in this video is HAGS or Hardware Accelerated Graphic Scheduling. The big question, on or off? Well, the answer is different for different people with different systems and different graphics cards. There's no simple on or off. From what I can ascertain, providing you're using the latest NVIDIA graphic drivers and you're using a Series 10 or Series 20 graphics card, regardless of where and how you're flying, you should have hags off. For those with NVIDIA graphics cards Series 30, and admittedly I've only tested it with the 3090, it's my view in monitor mode that it makes no difference. You don't get the drop in performance that 20 and 10 series cards experience. 
In VR, again, there is no difference to the frame rate as far as I can ascertain. But it appears to me that there are less micro pauses. It's slightly smoother with the hags on. So my recommendation for those flying VR with a 30 series graphics card, have your hardware accelerated graphics scheduling switched to on. I hope you found this video useful and informative, and if nothing else, perhaps it will give you some guidance or idea in terms of expectation should you decide to upgrade your graphics card or system in the future. Thank you very much for joining me today. Don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest developments in Flight Sim. Stay safe, stay well, and bye for now.